Let's talk about decomposing numbers or breaking down numbers. Given the number 678, I could break it down into so many different ways. I can break it up into the number of tens, for instance. I have 67 tens along with some ones. And how many ones would I have here? 67 tens, or that's worth 670, along with eight ones. And so all together, that's 67 tens with eight ones, also equal to that original number, 678. I also could just break it up and then break it down further there. I could break it up into 678 ones if I really wanted to. There's so many different ways I could break apart that number or decompose it. And there's yet another way. 600, 7 tens, 8 ones. I could break that and apart that number into its unit form. Let's take a back, step back and look at 9 ones and think about how many different ways we can end up writing this. We can go even smaller than ones. And those would go one step smaller than the ones place. We would be in the tenths place. And we can think about how many tenths we would need to equal one one. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths. We would need ten tenths to equal one. And then so if we need ten tenths to equal one, then how many tenths would we need to equal nine ones? We would need nine of these. Or nine ten tenths. Or nine ten tenths. 9 10 tenths, which is actually equal to 90. We would need 90 tenths to equal 9. 90 tenths, if we write it like this here, 90 tenths does equal that 9 holes. 90 divided by 10 equaling that 9. Thinking about that in another way, remember if I had a place value chart here, and this was 1's here, and this is tenths, and I need 10 of these, right? Remember I need that bar model there? I have 10 tenths to be able to trade in 10 tenths in 401. And then so if I had 9 of these, or I had 9 of these, 9 tenths, or I'm sorry, 90 tenths, I had 9 of these, meaning I had um, 10 tenths here. I can trade each of those bars, which was worth 10, for 679, 10, <clears throat> for one of those ones. 10 tenths equaling that 1. I just didn't bother to draw the whole thing there. Again, I have 9 ones equaling 90 tenths. I'd actually even have it as 90, well, actually it'd be 900 hundredths, or even 9,000 thousandths, equivalent still to those 9 ones. Let's work with a decimal. Here we have 8 and 72 hundredths. Breaking it down into its unit form just based on its values, we'll have eight ones, seven tenths, and two hundredths. And there I've written it out. Now these eight ones could be traded for tenths. Each of those ones is worth ten tenths, so eight of those ones would be worth eighty tenths. So if I put eighty tenths together with those seven tenths, I would add those two together, and I would end up getting 87 tenths. 87 tenths, still two hundredths. If I was to decompose that further, I could trade these 87 tenths for hundredths. Each of those tenths is worth... <laughs> each of those tenths is worth ten hundredths, so that 87 tenths is worth 870 hundredths, 870 hundredths, and then if I put it together with that 2, it's 872 hundredths. Notice the pattern here of how it is that this number is decomposed further, so we're looking at it from place to place. In this case, one of the key things to notice here is that each of these places actually has a digit in there, it will look a little bit different if we um, had our number as before where it is that we had a zero in one of those places. So you do have to be careful of that. 
as you're decomposing numbers to make sure that that number still has the same value as that original number. Let's look at one more example here where it is that we are looking at money in this case, or $9.25. We can think about money and we can think about the number of $1 bills or the number of ones, the number of dimes, or that tenths place, and the number of pennies, or the ones place in this number. And that's very similar. In other words, we're looking at that ones place, right? We're looking at the tenths place because a dime is worth one-tenth of a dollar. And we're looking at the pennies place, which is one-hundredth of a dollar. How many ones is it? Right, nine. How many dimes would you need there to make up that number? If we already had nine ones, you need two. And if we already had nine ones and two dimes, how much more would you need to be able to equal $9.25? You would just need five more pennies. Now, another way to write this then, if we were looking at this here and we're all, oh man, we want to get $9.25, but there was no such thing as ones, and we had to get enough dimes, to equal that nine ones, how many dimes do you need to make up a dollar? Write ten of them. And then so if ten dimes already equals one dollar, and ten dimes equals one one, and then so it's a one dollar bill, of course, then um, how many dimes would you need to equal nine ones? You would need one times nine there, 10 times 9 equaling 90 dimes, 90 dimes. And so if I put those 90 dimes, 9 times 10 that is, remember these are related by f that power of 10 because that's how it is that that base 10 system works. 90 dimes together with the 2 dimes is 92 dimes. 92 dimes along with still 5 pennies. Of course, if I didn't have 92 dimes, each of those dimes is worth 10 pennies, and then so 92 of those dimes would be worth 920 pennies, and then so I could have 925 pennies still to be equal to my $9.25. So there I've decomposed um, that number, and decomposing that number, just relating it to money. Here, let's go ahead and have you try. If we read this number right here, I'll walk you through this. This number right here is seven and 325 thousandths. Seven and 325 thousandths. So go ahead and fill it in, right for your unit form, what each of these values is for each of these numbers. Go ahead and take a look here. Think about those places and how it is that we've originally broken each of these numbers apart and broken each of these numbers down. Pause the video and I'll write in those answers of a possible unit form and the possible unit form that you'd probably come up with if we started and broke this number down would be as follows. Seven ones, three of those tenths, two of those hundredths, and five of those thousandths. Now what we could do though is that we could break apart these seven ones into tenths and each of those ones is worth ten tenths. Pause the video. Remember to put it together with uh, three tenths to see what it is that you would come up with. And then so now what we're doing again is we're writing something along the lines of something tenths along with still those two hundredths along with those five thousandths. Try. Those seven ones are worth 70 tenths. Putting it together with the three tenths, we get 73 tenths. So that 73 tenths is worth seven and three tenths. With those 200 still, and with those five thousandths, making up that number seven and 325 thousandths, just in a different unit form. We could still break it down into hundreds even. Those 73 tenths being worth 730 hundredths, so we would have 732 hundredths and five thousandths, together with five thousandths. 
There are so many different ways that we can break apart this number, and by decomposing this number in this fashion, it will help us with our later work.